as you, as Inigo kindly said, I work for the Joint Research Centre, and we are the in-house knowledge service of the European Commission. And recently, we've been working uh, very well with DG Employment on this uh, subject of certification excellence. And specifically, we are trying to give a, an extra territorial dimension to the initiative. Um, and I mean, it was already done for us in a way through, uh, by DG Employment through the the uh, description they have on the website, which is that you know if, if you read it, Centre for Vocational Excellence bring together a wide range of local partners, such as providers of vocational education and training, employers research centres, development agencies and employment services to develop skills ecosystems that contribute to regional economic and social development, innovation and smart specialisation strategies. Um, but there are, are four elements, let's say, of the territorial dimension, four themes that I would like to go through with you this morning. And I'll say just um, a couple of uh, a minutes on each of these uh, these themes. So, so the first theme is regional innovation systems. Um, you know, and policymakers have for several decades tried to understand the dynamics within cities and regions that make some more successful than others. You know, from Italian districts of agile SMEs through European manufacturing giants like Baden-Württemberg to the high-tech startups of, of Silicon Valley. And in all these successful places, innovation has played a key role, although the type of innovation differs, as, as Joao referred to. Um, another common feature of these places is that proximity allows knowledge to flow between the different agents, much of it tacit knowledge that cannot be codified and relies on, on interaction. Of course, the pandemic challenges some of these assumptions about physical proximity, but we can still see places, regions, as systems. In other words, the different parts are greater than the whole. As the figure in the in the slide shows, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I like this figure because it talks about research and learning institutions rather just than the traditional universities. And of course, government and industry was often referred to as a triple helix. But what really matters is what happens in the middle, the interactions, the transfer of knowledge, the partnerships, um, and the leadership of different um, institutions. And I think VET institutions can provide such leadership as well. Um, uh, the, the recently, the biological analogy of an ecosystem has been used to describe such independencies that exist in biological as well as social sciences. And we can see this um, in a regional level too. There's some examples of such interdependent regional ecosystems uh, from the Committee of the Regions, a publication of a couple of years ago, and also from my colleagues very recently have published such examples. But I hope that the Centre of Vocational Excellence can provide more examples uh, which are needed about how VET can contribute to such systems. Um, however, you know, the models that we have uh, cannot be applied the same to every region because you know, they vary from one place to another. Each, re each re region varies in their economic and employment structure and their position in the, in the digital and green transitions. As Joao mentioned, these transitions are now central to the European Commission's objectives. You now, from the digital side, we can see that jobs are destroyed through automation, um, especially those involving routine or repetitive tasks. By contrast, demand has increased for those people with transversal or soft skills. And these are the type of skills that, that, that the sense of vocational excellence need to develop. You know, these are the skills that computers can't teach us or do for us. Um, you know, it's the middle skill jobs which have been hollowed out and we have to concentrate on providing the type of jobs which will, will, will increase employment in, in such regions. 
And then on the green transition, you know, moving to a low carbon economy will require the, the reskilling of the workforce. And the European Commission is, is, is aware of the fact that there will be some regions who have difficulty in this and so have launched the, the, the Just Transition Fund as part of the, the EU's um, Green Deal. The, the slide here, I must say I've copied it from the OECD report because this is a report on industrial transitions. Uh, this is very interesting to read and there's a section here on skills. Uh, the map there shows which regions may be disproportionately affected by the uh, the move to automation compared to to others. As you can see, it's mostly in the uh, in the east of of the European Union. Okay, the next slide is on smart specialisation, and this is something that I know about, especially because at the Joint Research Centre we've been working mainly with DG Regional Policy, on smart specialisation. Um, it's a flagship initiative for the European Commission um, and has been the basis for spending on innovation from the, the European Structural Funds uh, since 2014. Um, and as you can see from this matrix, it's, it, it brings together the different potentials that exist in, in, in a place, whether it's the economic potential, the innovative potential, the scientific potential, and, and what those challenges are, um, uh, which, which we see at local level. The big societal challenges that we know, but how they're felt at local level. And it, it looks to find uh, specific solutions that are based on a, a region strengths. Now, this, um, this policy approach of smart specialization, it combines two logics of, of top down, because uh, regions are expected to set priorities. I think Jorgis mentioned this. Um, but at the same time, it has to be done through an entrepreneurial discovery process, we say. So how it feeds decisions to funding allocation of policymakers. You know, and, and sense of vocational excellence, you know, can have a, a key role in, in both defining and implementing such priorities. However, I think uh, what we've seen from the first phase of smart specialization is that uh, the the vet centers have not been uh, have not been active especially in the governance of the these regional strategies it's tend to be universities and regions of focus on a on a science and technology model rather than this interaction knowledge diffusion and yet smart specialization uh, you know, it was invented uh, in a way about using, um, diffusing, applying new technologies in in the workplace. So it's it's puzzling that uh, vet centres haven't had a, a stronger role than uh, than you know would be expected. And this is the messages that we are, are coming back from both regional policymakers and at European level. Uh, and DG Regional Policy have actually now included a specific objective on skills for smart specialization in the European Regional Development Fund, which will start next year. Okay. Just to say that, you know, the, the, the smart specialization approach, it's also European policy. So regions and vet centers who were involved in smart specialization strategies can link up with other regions on in thematic partnerships. In this in this case, uh, as you can see, related to industrial modernisation. And quickly going, I couldn't finish talking about smart specialisation have, after having been invited by the Basque Country without showing that there are examples, despite what I said, of of how um, uh, regions have involved vocational education training in the smart specialization strategy. Also, just to say that, like sense of vocational excellence, smart specialization itself is not only a European policy approach. And um, I know that there's participants in this conference from all around the world. And you can see here where countries, especially in Latin America, Australia and the, the neighbourhood of the EU have also been implementing smart specialisation strategies despite it not being a, a, 
an obligation as it, as it is for spending the European funds on, on innovation. Okay, lastly, um, the theme of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I think the way that institutions fit in into innovation at the regional level is that we see innovation in, in, a, in a broad sense, that we, um, we don't just reduce it to uh, economic growth. And, you know, when we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, I think they're very good objectives for regions to have in mind with their smart specialisation strategies. Um, the, the United Nations has, has done a lot of work, not only on SDGs, but on localising the SDGs. Um, now, vocational education is linked strongly to the to SDGs 4 and 8, um, especially the link from the transition from education to employment. Um, but, you know, one thing which is a strength of the, the vocational education, uh, vocational excellence initiative, which is why I like it so much, is that it doesn't just focus on VET. It focuses on, as I said, the ecosystem, the transitions, smart specialization strategies. Because, you know, if it is just focused on VET, you know, on the Ministry of Labour or the Ministry of Education, uh, you know, it can create new VET graduates. But if there's no attention to innovation and industrial demand, then infrastructure development and, and foreign investment, other, other aspects, then these VET graduates may just walk away from the region and that investment in the education um, won't help. Certainly not as much as it could do. Now, you know, it's linked to the, 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 the SDGs 4 and 8, but SDG 11 on sustainable cities and communities now, these are about local authorities having the potential to implement innovative actions, you know, ed inclusive education, and these local authorities often have more responsibility for VET institutions or regional authorities than they do for universities and higher education. So combining the, the local approach and VET can have a big impact on you know, some of these other SDGs, whether it's climate, ageing, the, the challenges that we face. Um, just in the slide there, you can see the an image about SDG voluntary local reviews and education and trainings in there. It's a guidebook uh, developed by colleagues in the Joint Research Centre that allows regional authorities to monitor the implementation of the SDGs in their regions and give some indicators to use. Okay, well, there were just four themes that I wanted to, to briefly go through with you. I hope that you've been following and that the presentation was useful. Thank you. There were some questions regarding the contribution of higher vet or universities of applied sciences or higher education in general to the development of COBES, to the development of centers of vocational excellence. Can you say something to that? Um, I could. I could make some observations of the work we've done with regions, which is that uh, what works best is when different types of institutions cooperate with each other. Um, it, I think there's a, a, an increasing blurring between the different levels of, of education, and you know, there are universities of applied sciences providing VET, um, and also the other way, there are uh, vet colleges who are now much more involved in research than they used to. So this this level is blurring and what's important is not at the level it's provided but it, the quality, the excellence. So mixing these different types of institutions can be a very strong combination for, for regional development. You know, in, I know that in the Basque Country, as well as other places, you've explored the idea of, of, of dual degrees with a more academic and more practical component. And that's an example of where the different types of institutions can work together. And just referring to smart specialization, if you're looking at specific themes in the economy, then 
if the repetition between different institutions, whether it's universities or the sense of vocational excellence, that doesn't create a critical mass. If, if different institutions, a bit like the boat analogy in your vice minister's presentation was was uh, trying to, to, to illustrate. I think if the different institutions in a region can work well together, then it's much more likely that a, a smart specialization strategy or any other type of regional strategy is successful. Thank you, John. Thank you very much.